in and um, today's presentation will go for about uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes. We'll see how many questions we have. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for taking the time today to come and learn a little bit about memberships. We have um, a few different types of uh, people. We have people who are already running memberships in their salon today joining us to learn a little bit more. We have people who uh, are on the salon pay program but are yet to delve into the world of memberships. And then we have people who are here just to have a bit of a sticky beak and to see how it all works and to learn some more about salon pay as a whole. Um, so I've got some slides that I'd like to run through just to keep us on topic. Uh, so I'll just share the screen with you. Um, we will be holding all questions until the end just to save time and to, to keep um, us on track, otherwise I will get distracted. Okay, um, so salon pay memberships. So this is specifically a guide for how to run memberships within your, uh, within your salon. This is a guide for salon owners. So what we're going to be covering today, so a little bit about us, a little bit about why you would want to run a salon membership program, how to formulate some really great packages, the legal requirements involved with running a membership program, how to sell memberships in your salon, getting your team on board, how to use salon pay, and then we're going to bring Sally Turpin in, our operations manager at the end, for some FAQs and to answer questions. So a little bit about us. Uh, my name is Christy McKenzie. I'm the founder of Salon Pay. I am a born and bred Melbourne, Australia person or girl. Um, I'm one of four children and I had very entrepreneurial parents. Uh, I went to a very elite private girls school in Melbourne and had the choice um, for myself of do I want to be an accountant or a hairdresser. I chose hairdressing, but I find it very funny that I've ended up uh, with a financial product and company because uh, it sort of fits in alignment with that love for numbers that I had way back you know, 20 years ago. So I have been in the industry for 20 years. Um, I'm also the owner of Secret Salon Society. I'm the mum of twin girls and a wife, and I, I, I have owned multiple businesses, including salons over my career. So why memberships? Uh, we love memberships, and this is where it all started way back when with Secret Salon Society, which was our membership program for salon owners. Uh, predictable cash flow was the number one reason why I started it in my salon. Uh, we love our regular loyal clients, but I wanted to have a way to really look after them and to really separate and recognise our loyal regular clients as opposed to the, the people that we see often, but not really, really regularly. Uh, we, liked, we love memberships because they will increase, if they're set up correctly, they will increase your client average. They will fill up gaps in your appointment book and they will increase the value of your business. So how does this all work? So let's talk a little bit about cash flow to start with. So imagine having a regular income that pops into your bank account once a week that is all of your members. So you can find, you find that planning for your big expenses is a lot more easy. Um, things like your bass bills, your um, any sort of big renovations that you might be having. We have had people in the past who have actually saved all of their membership income and then renovated their salon. Uh, it's think of it as a payday for your salon, which is great and forced savings. The income is predictable. So you can start to plan forward for things like when your staff are on holidays, um, you know, all those things that do impact the cash flow. When you've got a nice, consistent, predictable cash flow, that's, uh, it makes these things a lot less stressful. Uh, regular clients, so you find that with memberships, your clients rebook on time. They don't want to miss out on their appointments. So unlike a gym membership, where often people pay for a gym membership, myself included, and then they don't go, people actually do love to use their salon membership. So they really feel like they are taking care of themselves. So self-care uh, in and around having a salon membership is a really big reason why people love to be a 
salon member, um, they visit more regularly. So you'll often find that, for example, your blonde clientele, they want to come in that little bit more often because they hate having a regroup, but they don't because of time and money. So if we can remove that those excuses for them and have them on a blonde maintenance membership at say a five week visit, uh, you will find they will get an extra one or two visits in the year, which is really great. Uh, depending on what you're structuring with your packages, if you do have gaps in the week, you can structure some packages to actually take care of those gaps in the week and to fill up those little annoying 15 minute or 30 minute gaps. Um, increased client average. So because the clients are coming in and they're not having to pay that big bill on the day, there's less guilt associated with their salon membership and their salon visit. They will more, they're more likely to buy retail and they're more likely to upgrade their services because they're not paying a huge lump sum in, their, in the salon when they're having their, their visit for their hair or their beauty services. Uh, it will increase the value of your business and I know this firsthand uh, from selling my salon uh, because a new business owner is buying more than goodwill. Um, they have an actual physical or there's a value that you can place on a membership system and, and if structured correctly, the membership, uh, the clients on memberships will transfer over to a new owner, which is great. So that the new buyer is, is purchasing more than just goodwill. It's a lot more security for them. Um, client solicitation. So, you know, when, with staff coming and going and, and clients coming and going and following and leaving uh, stylists or beauty therapists, you find that uh, they will stay if they're a member and if you know, if, this, if their hairdresser or beauty therapist leaves the salon, um, it gives you that opportunity to have a conversation with that client. So um, your terms and conditions will be your terms and conditions and we'll get into that a little bit later. But what you'll find is that if a client wants to um, follow someone, they have to have a conversation with you. So it gives you the opportunity to keep them um, and, and whatever your uh, terms and conditions are is, is up to you. There's less fear of competitors as well because you've got what other people don't have if you're running a membership program. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about formulating great packages. So every single salon will have different reasons to do this and they'll have different ideas of what their clients want. Um, so thinking very firstly about your target market. So there's absolutely no point in creating packages that only a tiny percentage of your clients want. You have to think about packages that your clients want. So things like having, um, you know, those really regular visits. So it could be waxing, it could be, uh, it could be gray coverage, it could be the blondes like we just spoke about. So thinking about your ideal client and their common services and how often they visit. Uh, that's the first place you would start nutting out. So um, I always think it's a great exercise to revisit who your target market is every once in a while. We usually have a pretty good idea of who it is, but actually sitting down and nutting out um, every you know few years because things do change. Um, often I find that um, the you know, your clientele will get older. And if you're still wanting to attract a younger clientele, then you might need to change your marketing. Or if you want to keep growing with your clientele, it might be that your target market is actually older than, you know, if you started out 10 years ago, your client, your client base might be that little bit older, if that makes sense. Um, so thinking about your ideal client and then looking at your common services. I always think that when you're creating packages, you want to have say three different types to start with. You don't want to have too many. Um, it's like the old analogy of going to a video shop in the 90s on a Friday night and then you couldn't find anything to watch because there was too much choice. If you have too many packages, the default choice will always be no. Your clients will be confused, your staff will be confused and it, the default answer when someone is confused is no. So what you'll want to do is um, choose some packages, three to four packages at the most, that uh, are the common services. I always like to start with a, a package that is what I call the gap filler package. So moving to this next, um, you know, the middle section here, solving a problem, um, thinking about gaps in the day. Uh, if you don't have any gaps, then that's amazing. Um, I know my salon, I worked out that we had about 15 hours worth of gaps every week. By the time I took five seniors and then 
added out and added out up those 30 minute gaps here and there for them throughout the day it worked out to be about 15 hours which is a huge amount of time so i formulated some gap filling packages which were 30 minutes they were blow waves they were really really cheap which might not be in alignment with your branding but for me i would rather my staff um, sat you know helped service a client and and saw them really regularly uh, for that blow wave filling up those gaps i would rather they did that than clean my salon stand around being bored or whatever else might happen through the day so i did quite cheap blow wave packages um, then i trained my staff to upsell so those clients that were coming in now weekly for a blow wave i'm not you know previously we we were not seeing them you know for eight weeks for colors and then what we found was they were cut they would actually have their colors earlier so whilst they're in the salon and they're, they're coming in really regularly, they, you know, it's things like maybe we'll do a toner next week, it's looking a bit grassy. Um, they would happily do that because they knew that they were going to be coming in. It's not going to take them really any more time to have that toner, but that was an extra, you know, 30 or $40, depending on what you're charging um, in the till for that toner. Um, and then we would bring their colour forward. Um, what we found was that people like to they like to come in more often than what they do. If they don't rebook, they forget when they're due. They also, um, you know, they'll put it off or by the time they actually pick up the phone to ring, then you're too busy and then they have to wait a couple of weeks. But most people do actually love visiting their salon every six weeks. So uh, solving a problem, if you've got gaps in the day, think of some packages that you can uh, create to utilize those gaps. If you're in the beauty industry, it could be uh, something like an eyebrow tidy at the three week mark, for example. It could be um, a good gap filling, um, could be an extra add on or an eye treatment or something like that. Um, you'll have to, excuse me, I am more of a hair background, so I tend to. Um, I tend to talk more about hair um, in saying that salon pay is probably about a 50-50 split at the moment with our, with our uh, clients being either hair and beauty. So we are definitely both. Um, the other thing you want to think about is are you building, a, building up a junior's clientele? So do you have a junior in the salon that needs to build up a clientele? So you can think of some really great packages that's going to support their training. Uh, clients love to feel like they're doing you a favor. So if you have a really great package that's for your rising stylist or for your you know, budding therapist, uh, thinking of some really great packages for them, um, if people love that. They love to feel like they're doing like a community service, I guess, in a way. Um, so thinking about that, you can also bundle in retail if you, if you like. I would usually suggest bundling in retail at the second round of package launch. So the first ones, I wouldn't make it too complicated by adding in too much retail. I would probably add in retail at the second um, phase, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So going back to target market, who is your ideal client? What are the common services that you're having done? I would print off, we're all pretty much computerized these days, aren't we? You can print off a, co a common service list of colors, cuts, waxing, facials, what are your common services? Look at what you can do with putting them into a package. Thinking about increasing their visit, you know, one extra visit per year. Imagine what your business would look like if you had every single client just visiting one more time per year. I'm fairly certain that would be a massive income jump for you. Um, thinking about solving the problems. So are you building up a junior? Do you have gaps in your day? Do you want to bundle in some retail? And now thinking about the price point. Now there's a few different ways that you can go about creating your packages. You can look at your services. Um, say for example, it could be a four weekly regrowth coverage, uh, grey re regrowth coverage with a ladies cut and blow wave. You might look at that and say that's costing $200 for example. You might decide to add say a 10 or 20% discount onto that package and market that as a, um, as a package. The other thing that you can do is you can, you can discount, but you can do it. Um, if your most of your clients are coming in, if we use the gray coverage and the cut and blow wave example as an analogy, if most of your clients are coming in every six weeks for a gray coverage and a cut and blow wave, and you want them to come in every five weeks or four weeks, 
you can apply a small discount to that usual service, knowing that you're going to be using less product, knowing that that client's not going to be having, you know, a full restyle every six weeks. It'll just be a tidy up um, haircut at that four week mark. And if you do that as a dis at a discount, it is going to take you less time in the salon and your client will really perceive that they're getting a really great deal. Um, the other thing that you can do if you're not comfortable with discounting at all is you can add value in. So you can take that grey coverage cut and colour and you can add in a treatment or you can add in um, some foils or you can add in a, you know, a take like a, um, a balance sort of to take it through through to the ends. Um, you can do, you can add value into your packages most definitely. So I would probably suggest having some that are a little bit discounted and then some that add value. Um, and then thinking about your member ben benefits. So most of our salon pay salon running memberships will offer their members 10% off retail, 10% off any additional services, and then 10% off uh, for referrals, so for family and friends that they bring in. Uh, that's kind of the standard. You can, you can play with that. This is your program, um, your terms and conditions. Um, so we'll definitely take some questions around formulating packages. Our team is really great at helping you to create your packages as well. Um, but I always think, you know, when it comes to creating packages, just keep it really simple look at what your clients are wanting and, and having, make it easy for them. Um, having a package that is a great um, small commitment gap filling package that's a little bit juicy and maybe with a discount to start with, having a package that you know a good chunk of your clients are gonna purchase straight away is another great package. I always like to have a package for people to aspire to as well. And what I did in my salon was I had my really, you know, quite reasonably priced blow wave package. I had a color and cut package. And then I had one that was a color cut and weekly blow wave package. So I kind of took the two packages and added them together and had this awesome package that was, you know, what I, I guess wanted most people to purchase. Cause that would mean, you know, that's the ideal client, isn't it? They're visiting weekly and they're having everything done. Um, so now we're gonna talk about selling memberships. Um, now, it's like with anything, you have to prepare your staff and train your staff properly. Um, they have to know what this is. It's no good in having this really amazing membership system, but it's all in your head. You have to train your staff and you have to get them on board. Um, so we always sort of say prepare, launch, refine and scale. So prepare your, uh, preparing for your launch. So things like having a staff training session, if you're going to create some posters to get them printed up and have them around the salon, um, formulate your social media images, keeping in mind that we uh, provide you with heaps of marketing collateral, which I'll go through a little bit later, uh, but creating your social media images and social media hashtags, set a launch date, um, understand the T's and C's, so what are your terms and conditions, and make sure that you are completely across them and your staff are across them. And then I would practice the sales process and role play. You feel a bit funny in the beginning, but if you make it really fun and get your staff to role play, you know, selling a, um, selling a membership, then that can be a great way to prepare them. And then launch. So you want to make it really fun. I would decorate your salon. I would have a VIP information night. You might choose to run a competition. So it could be, you know, if you if you join up to package um, a membership package by, you know, it could be say the end of March, for example, then you go in the draw to win, you know, complimentary retail for the year or, or a shampoo, you know, a shampoo or conditioner or, or a skincare product, whatever it is that you want to do, um, but definitely to run a competition. You want to wow your clients. So making sure that you've got um, systems in place so that your VIP members are totally looked after. It could be that you get different capes in for them. You could get something different in for them so that they know that they're a little bit more special than all your other clients. Um, but thinking of those ways to wow them. It could be that you, um, instead of, you know, you might use your normal crockery on everyone else, but they might get, you know, like a special gold mug or something. Um, you know, make it really special and different. There's so many ideas and options with wowing your clients. Um, you want to make sure that you're marketing on your socials. Now, that doesn't mean just doing one post. You know, I would be doing stories. I would create a new highlights button so that as all your new members come on board, you're sharing the excitement. 
um, I would be uh, putting a link on your website so you'll get a, a custom URL uh, that's personalised for your membership packages through Salon Pay, which we'll go into a little bit later. Uh, but you can pop that URL link behind a button on your website or behind your Facebook, um, a Facebook button so that people can click and buy straight away, which is what you want. So you've got, you've got to market it and you've got to launch, um, I guess, in a big way is what I would suggest doing. Um, as you go on, you then want to refine. So I always like to check in about three months into a program and look at what packages are selling and what packages are not. There's no point in having packages sitting there available if no one's buying them. Like I said before, it becomes too confusing if you've got too many packages. So if, the, if you've got some that aren't selling, just delete them, don't, don't market them. You can still, if someone asks for them, it's up to you if you still wanna offer it or not. But I would be always looking at having things that are active and current and on trend rather than things that are a bit, you know, just sitting there like collecting dust. Um, ask for, look at what the clients are asking for. So your clients will sit there, they all think they're experts in your business and that they're experts in, in our industry. Your clients might say things like, oh, it'd be really great if you had a package that was this, or it'd be really great if you had a package that was that. So make sure that you listen to those comments and know that with Salon Pay, you can actually give them, you know, if you wanted to do custom packages for different people, then you can. Um, but if you prefer just to keep it to your set packages, you want to make sure that you're listening to them. I would be checking in on the client averages to make sure that they are going up. Uh, that's a really important one. And that three monthly assessment um, is, is what I would be doing. So you want to check in with current members as well. So making sure that after that people have had a couple of visits with their being a VIP member, check in with them, see how they're going and, you know, ask them for a testimonial. Chances are they're loving it. Most people do. Um, so you want to ask them for a testimonial. Um, that way you can, you can keep promoting with your Instagram highlights um, or on your Facebook page um, with all the current um, testimonials. Checking in with your staff as well. You'll find there will always be that staff member that thinks it's a terrible idea. That's just, you need to, I guess, get that out of the way because there'll always be that staff member that thinks it's a terrible idea. Um, so we don't necessarily want to listen to them too much. <laughs> um, but you want to check in with your staff and see how they're going, see if they need more training. They might have some great ideas for some new packages as well that you can think about, um, but definitely checking in with staff. Um, also with the three monthly assessment, I guess understanding that this is not for everyone. You're not going to have every single client that sits in your chair or comes into your selling wanting to sign up to a membership. So knowing that this isn't for everyone takes that pressure off yourself and your staff, but it will be for you know, a big percentage if you want it to be in your salon. Um, then we're going to think about scaling. So once you have, um, once you have re, you know, relaunched, you might want to scale and, and introduce some seasonal packages that are just you know, available for a short period. Um, Salon Pay will allow you to do three, six or 12 monthly memberships. So you might decide to do a, you know, we're coming into autumn now or spring if you're in the US, you might want to do a seasonal new package for this season that's all about kind of, you know, treating that summer hair or treating that summer skin and getting some nourishment happening again. And it could be that that is just a three month package for a season. Um, you might want to engage an influencer if there's a local business or a local influencer that you want to get them on a membership so they can talk about it and, you know, send your cell on some love. Um, you might want to think about doing that. Um, you might want to raise your prices outside of membership. So you might keep your membership packages exactly the same, but raise your prices outside your memberships to encourage people to sign on. Um, membership only salon. There are salons in this world, believe it or not, that are membership only salons. So what that means is they've got themselves to a point where you cannot actually get into a salon unless you're a member. Exactly like a gym membership, you might be able to visit once for a trial to make sure you're a good fit. But then if you want to keep coming, you actually have to sign on. And that could be um, for you know a short term or for a long term or even a casual membership if you like. Um, but membership only salon is definitely an option. We do have salons in Australia that have stylists and therapists completely booked out with members only, uh, which is really, really exciting. Um, imagine your business if your staff were completely booked solid 
with members only. And like imagine that you could hundred you could predict the next twelve months worth of income, which would be so empowering. Um, definitely encourage upselling with um, a scaling. So you might find that you've got your current members and they're all really happy coming in every six weeks and you've checked in with them and it's great. But are they up, are your staff upselling? So you know, if they're coming in for a cut and colour or if they're coming in for a facial once a month, after three months, so they haven't bought any skincare or if they haven't had an eye treatment or a collagen treatment or something a bit different, you want to talk about that with your staff and make sure that you're encouraging upselling. So knowing the terms and conditions. Now this is, this membership program is your membership program. It's not Salon Pay's membership program it's your salon membership program. So your terms and conditions are your terms and conditions. So you wanna think about things like your minimum contract terms. Now through salon pay, you can do whatever you like, but through the actual package builder, you can set a three, six or 12 month term. That will, um, and then if somebody wants to cancel, so thinking about a cancellation policy, if somebody wants to cancel before that time, then you need to think about what your cancellation policy is. Our team is definitely here to help you with those questions. Uh, we have our sort of set standard um, cancellation policy, but you know that is completely up to you whether or not you want to enforce it. We have some salons that 100% enforce 60 day cancellation policy, and we have some that offer you know, enforce of 30 days. And then we have some that just basically add up the services that they've had. And so long as no one's out of pocket, everyone's happy. Um, also familiarizing yourself with the Salon Pay Direct Debit Agreement, uh, which is available on our website. Um, definitely getting in touch with the team uh, can, can help you with looking through the Direct Debit Agreement. Uh, getting your team on board. So again, thinking about what we just spoke about before with education. So it's really important that your team know each package inside and out, which is why having just a few is best. What's included and what's excluded. Make sure you're role playing the sales process um, and get all that out of the way. Then you wanna incentivize it. So what's in it for them? Like with anything, figuring out what your staff want is probably one of the hardest parts of your job is. <laughs> um, once you learn what it is, it's easy. And if it's, you know, they want time off, then it could be, okay, you sell 10 memberships and you can have a day off paid. Or if it's money, then it could be, okay, for each membership you sell, I'm gonna give you a $50 bonus. Um, I would make this your go-to because you will have a lot of your staff um, earning extra commission. Uh, for their, their hair, you know, hair and beauty treatments anyway. So I would make this just a little bit better than their normal commission because you want them to want to do this. Make it fun. So I would think about having a team target as well and definitely sharing in the wins together. So I would be at that three month assessment, if not earlier, looking at what you've done, looking at uh, what the wins are and, and celebrating. It could be that you just go out for a drink. It could be that you, you buy lunch for a day. Um, actually just on the incentivizing um, topic, I remember from my staff, whoever sold a membership would get the prime position car park. So if whoever sold the most for the week, I would let them park in my spot, <laughs> which was the pole position out the back. Um, and they loved it. They thought that was so fun. So, you know, it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to impact your business at all from a financial perspective. It can just be little things that keep it fun and keep it fresh to reward your team and make, make them know that you appreciate them. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about Salon Pay now and how you can use the Salon Pay portal to facilitate this whole thing. Um, keeping in mind that Salon Pay was built to facilitate memberships. So we have heaps of other awesome features. We obviously have our partnership with Afterpay. We have uh, the ability to take card payments and set up you know, recurring care lay buys and beauty lay buys. But memberships was the whole point. That was way back when, that was the whole point of creating all this. We wanted a place where everything sat that was self-service and really easy to use. Um, so we have an automated package builder, like I said, that can help you create a three, six or 12 month package. And it's an automated calculator. So you don't need to sit there with a the calculator working things out. Um, there's a custom landing page. So what that is, is that will take all your packages that you've built, that will pop them on this custom landing page that has a unique URL specific to your salon. Now that URL will sit on our website 
and you can take that URL and pop it behind buttons on your website. You can um, put it on your Facebook page and um, you, your clients and staff can use that link to purchase directly. That custom landing page can act as a mini website, I guess, as well. If you don't have a website, you don't necessarily need one. You can put um, photos of your beautiful work. I'll show you a little bit how that works in a minute. Um, photos of your work for clients to see. Um, booking links, links to liking your Facebook, all of your um, contact details that can all sit there on that landing page. Uh, so the payment processing that Salon Pay has is PCI compliant, secure, encrypted processing. Our, if a client misses a payment, the collection is one, three and five days. So the system will automatically keep trying to collect that payment. We do also have default management, which is for our premium subscribers only at this stage. We'll chat a little bit about that later as well. And then salon pay marketing collateral. So um, every single um, salon pay salon that signs up gets access to our library of salon pay marketing images. And then we have seasonal promotions as well, promotional images as well. Of course, there's in salon support and then we also do um, social media shout outs as well. So the automated package builder, if you see, um, if you have a look to, to your left here, you'll see that I have um, just done like a bit of a screenshot of the inside of the portal. So you would name your package. In this instance, I've called it package three, which is really, um, yeah, that's creative, isn't it? Um, if each visit price is $120. So that's the how often they're coming in. So I, this description is a monthly facial of your choice. So I'm, for me, a monthly facial is $120. And I'm gonna allow that client to come in every four weeks. Um, that description area can be formatted so you can make it with your colors, you can center it, you can, you can play around with how that looks on your landing page. Uh, you would select the time frame that that person, or well, that package is available. So I've selected three, six and 12 months and then you can upload a little image. So I'll, I'll show you how that looks in a minute. And then order is where you, the order of where you want that to sit on your landing page. So, um, so you can um, do all of that in your, um, the package builder. And then that pops itself on the custom landing page. So this is, this is an example of a test um, landing page that I created. So you can see that I've got package one, two, three, and then I've created a product pack, which uh, we do have a new feature launching very soon, if not this week, then the next week, which will actually be a separate product area on this landing page. So that's gonna allow people to buy products exactly like an e-commerce store would. Um, so you, you, know, you could do a product um, pack that's just a once-off special uh, at the, at, as using this example, I've put that as a once-off purchase, which isn't to do with memberships at all, but it's just on there to show you. Um, but you'll be able to see there that package one, two, and three, and you can see there the, the, it's got 12 months with a drop-down box. So that would, if you've allowed three and six month purchases, it will drop down to those other options. And then you can see there that it's made the, um, it's shown the amount per week that the client would be paying, but that drop down box will allow them to also pay fortnightly or monthly. Uh, a little bit, there's that picture of the girl there with her beautiful makeup. That's a sliding carousel. So you can pop, um, I think it's six or seven pictures in that carousel. So that can be of your work, of your salon, whatever you think clients will wanna see. There's an about us link to Facebook, contact details, email, and then there's a book now button. And that will, if you have, online bookings enabled through your point of sale provider, you'll be able to actually pop that link in that book now area so clients can actually book their appointment straight away, which is great. Payment processing. So once you click the purchase button, this is what pops up. So this is really simple. It just takes name, email address, phone number, their credit card, um, they agree to the terms of service and then purchase. And then in the background, what will happen is it will pop that information into your portal and you'll be able to see their payment frequency. You'll be able to see if they've missed a payment um, and all those sorts of uh, filtering options you'll be able to see in the background. 
Um, so we uh, have this payment processing is currently for our standard subscription set at a weekly payout, which is on a Monday. So what that means is all the money that's collected through the week pays out into your bank account on a Monday. So think of it as a forced savings and think of it as a great way to budget. Um, there is the option to have daily payouts so that is currently only for our premium subscribers. But if you prefer to have a, you know, a, a daily dump, then um, you can certainly ask us about that option for premium. Uh, like I said before, the, there's one, three and five day rebilling for missed payments. That all happens automatically without you having to do a thing. Our collection rate is really, really high on that one, three and five day rebilling. If for whatever reason anything's missed or falls outside of that, if, for example, if a client has a credit card hacked or something like that, um, the client will be getting an email from Salon Pay each time their payment is missed and it'll give them the option to make contact to fix that up. Um, you can also go into the portal and really easily see what payments have been missed and make contact with them yourself. Um, if you are a premium subscriber, we look after default management for you. So what that means is we monitor those one, three and five day rebilling and anything that falls outside of that, we will actually make contact with you and let, let you know via email exactly who has been missed. Um, and then you can ask us to help collect that money. Definitely we are not debt collectors, but we are more than happy to perform that administrative task for you because we know that you're busy. Um, so that's how the payment processing side of thing works. Sell on pay marketing. So as you join on, you get access to our image library, which has a few of these images um, in it. And then we do seasonal social media images as well. Um, if you hashtag salon pay, we monitor that um, each and every day. And if we love what you're posting, then we'll actually shout out as well, which is great. So what I would like to do now is I would like to bring our operations manager, Sally Turpin in. And Sally is gonna help answer some FAQs that we have. Um, so I'm just gonna pop the video on now. Now Sally's been with me for Oh, about 18 months now. She runs our customer service team. Sally is, um, I might get this video working. Here we are. <laughs> Hi, Sally. Hi. Um, Sally is, um, she runs our customer service team here and she's answering the phone, um, listening to the girls answering the phone. We take, oh, I don't know, a couple of hundred calls every, every week. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll bring this over here. Um, yeah, so we, um, Sally's definitely on the ground listening and um, we compile our FAQ. So we thought we would run through that before we throw over to some questions, if I can make sure that we know how to do that with our technology. So I guess the first question, Sally, is do clients want this? Do clients want a membership? <laughs> yeah, well, there's there's been a lot of um, studies and surveys done that we've definitely in the salon industry that clients do want to visit more regularly. They definitely um, have excuses and they have reasons why they can't, but they definitely want to visit more regularly. They want to look more beautiful. They want to feel more beautiful. Um, and so two of their biggest concerns is obviously time and cost. Um, and so this takes out sort of both of those. Lots of our um, salons that are running this really successfully also have that um, sort of VIP feeling that they also get those bookings, you know, when they're booking so far in advance, they sort of do always get the bookings that they're wanting, you know, it might be that Monday afternoon, or it might be that, you know, Saturday morning position, because they've booked so far in advance, they're able to feel a little bit special, they get to um, pay for it more easily, and it um, get the positions that they want and visit more regularly. Okay. Um, so in terms of um, another frequent asked a question would be uh, around pricing and would you be passing fees on to clients that's probably a big question that we get yeah most definitely um you know salons want to know how do we cover these costs for the fees that are involved um obviously we can't pass those directly onto the clients so there's a number of ways we can do it one of those um is increasing your cost uh, cost across the board so we recommend about a two to three percent across the board um, is hardly recognized and obviously you win some on the clients that are not on memberships um, and when the clients that are on memberships it's it's subsidized by those by those other ones that you get in and if you're increasing across the board 
um, yeah, when they do upsell and they get those extra things, then they're paying that tiny little bit more, but it covers those fees that you're now incurring. Um, another question that I, I used to get um, a lot of was in and around uh, having a package. So there's a bit of confusion, I guess, sometimes with having um, a membership package that is on a direct debit and, and someone's paying for that weekly versus somebody that is pre-paying for an entire 12 months. Yeah, so definitely you see offers and things where if you pay for um, 10 haircuts up front, you'll get this much discount or it's, it's this much cheaper if you pay, you know, a big thousand dollar lot or whatever it might be up front. Um, that does throw up a number of issues. That's definitely not something that, that we are definitely, at. you can definitely do it with the system, but it's not something that we're advocators for. The reason behind that is you know, we always try to think of what's best for the client and best for their salon. Um, and obviously getting that big injection of cash is great in the moment, but then you've got to be able to, to hold that through throughout yeah. the rest of the year. And if you got, if you had say 10 people doing that, you know, 10 months down the track when you're still doing your hair, their hair and no income is coming in, that, that can cause some real problems from the salon owner. Um, it also isn't something that banks advocate for either because yeah. obviously if the salon closes down, if the client, you know, there's a number of different reasons where those chargebacks might occur. And when the, the actual whole cost has happened quite a few months behind, it's harder to track what is really going on there. Um, so definitely um, as far as clients are concerned, it's not great for them either, but yeah. the salon doesn't get that regular income, which from it, from our experience, that's what you're all looking for. Everyone would like to have a big injection of cash once a week rather than once off in the year. And it's funny because when I had my salon, I that was how I actually started my membership program was I um, I did need a big injection, injection of cash because I'd renovated and I had some tradies I needed to pay. And of course, in true Christy fashion, it blew out the budget. Um, and I, I did, I ran a membership that was a prepayment of 12 months of, of services to literally pay that bill. And what I wasn't expecting was the amount of people that really desperately wanted to take that package on board, but they wanted to pay on direct debit. So that was the, where it all came from. Um, the whole membership program um, came from those clients wanting those questions. Um, what's another really common question that you get, Sally? Um, this one. So does salon pay integrate with any point of sale? Look, currently we've we've remained point of sale neutral, I guess, is a really great way to do it because yeah. there is, particularly in the States and Australia, which is where we are predominantly, there's, um, there's so many, you know, it's a really diverse industry, that point of sale industry. Um, and we wanted to make sure that this was a product that everybody could use. So there's definitely little tips and tricks that we yeah. can assist to make that easy with your point of sale and definitely ask the team and um, see how we can help you. But at the moment, we don't integrate with anyone. Um, and therefore, it works really beautifully alongside everyone. Yeah, nobody yeah. owns us. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, nobody misses out. No, that's right. Exactly. So another question would be what happens if a client stops paying? So do you want to maybe talk about the default management process? Yeah, sure. So um, obviously life happens. We all know all of us have lives outside our salons and our, and our work. Um, and a client may stop paying. What you have to remember with your memberships is firstly, um, those clients are prepaying. So typically they've either just come in for a service or they've, you know, it's not many weeks since their last service because they are regularly coming in. Um, and usually if they stop paying, um, there's a reason for it. And we do everything we can. So when you're um, on our standard, as I think you mentioned, yeah. um, we do rebuild that one, three and five days. So we do give them three opportunities to, oh my gosh, change their credit card, get in contact. On our premium, we do go all those steps further and we do reach out. If, if phone numbers are in the system, then we contact them that way and also via email. Um, and usually, in most cases, it's resolved then, whether it be that they're needing, you know, their cards being changed or expiry dates changed, their cards being hacked um, less regularly, but it still happens. Um, or alternatively, you know, there's some sort of extenuating circumstances. You know, we don't know what's happened in their life to cause them to not be thinking about this. <clears throat> the first thing to remember is that you, usually the salon's not at a loss because they're prepaying in the weekly or fortnightly or monthly prior to the service. So you're usually not out of pocket. It's just more of a, you know, 
finding out what's going on and then negotiating whether they still want to go on with their memberships or whether whether it's it's time to stop that and then the contracts enforced or we work out a mutually beneficial way so that everyone can move on that's it yep um what about is there well i guess how quickly you know that this is another big question we get yeah. is how quickly can we get started on the sell on pay program because it used to be way back when it would take weeks <laughs> um but now it can be pretty quick so i'll let sally just um talk about the getting started process yeah now obviously i'm um, going getting started with the full-blown membership um package that we've talked about it it's up to working with us and yourselves but as far as salon pay is concerned once you fill out that questionnaire that gets all your details into us it happens within 24 hours within 24 hours you have access um, to your portal, you're able to start creating those packages up, able to start preparing in preparation for that launch. Um, but you should have your logins um, within 24 hours, business hours. So if you do it on a Friday at midnight, then you definitely will have to wait till Monday. <laughs> but um, within 24 business hours, you will be able to log in and start taking payments immediately. No problems at all. Um, so another question we get asked a little bit is, um, if you're not in Australia or New Zealand, can you still use sell on pay? And, and so what countries are we currently available in? Yeah, so currently you, we are able to service Australia, New Zealand, the UK and the US. That's where we are at the moment. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a fairly big whack. I haven't learned to speak any other languages yet. So for now, <laughs> we are just keeping within those ones where we all speak the same language. <laughs> Very good. So I might have a, just a, a quick look to see what other questions that we have coming through here. I think that we have answered most of the questions as they've been coming in. Um, Jessica has asked, how do the packages work? How can a client pay $14 then come in for a service? Um, so she said that she's had clients try to sign up to their $11 or $17 weekly plan and then come in after it came straight away. So how does that work? Yeah, so Good when question. yeah, it's a great question. So when everyone in your salon is trained and launched, um, that's part of what you know the communication would be. So um, obviously, when they've paid eleven dollars, they can't just come in and get a two hundred dollar service. If you've, um, I'm trying to think what would be eleven dollars a week um, on a six week. Um, package I would really need to look deeply as to what that package would be as you saw but for example if it's if you launch a package and it's $25 a week and if your description says that it's a four weekly or a six weekly package um, then you they need to wait that four to six weeks correct before they can use that package. Yeah, so normally you'd be up, um, you'd be selling it within the salon. So they're getting their hair done or they're getting their facial or anything like that. And they've come in, this is their third, you know, style that they've had with you. And you say, look, you're coming in every six weeks. Did you know we've got packages now? You can, you can pay weekly or fortnightly rather than the big chunk all at once. And because you're doing their hair right then, they would pay for that service in that day, um, the full service. And then you would set them up to start weekly billing from the next week and book their appointment for the six weeks or four weeks or whatever it is. So then they're prepaying for that service. When they sign up to your landing page, um, obviously, and you haven't spoken with them yet, when they ring to book, you say, oh, you know, Chelsea, I see that you've signed up for the six weekly blonde package. That's fabulous. You signed up last night. So let's make your appointment for six weeks time. So that's how you, that's how you communicate that with them. You say, look, you're coming in every six weeks. By the time you've paid the next six weekly payments, you'll be ready to come in. We've got an opening on the Tuesday. Does that suit you? Or we've got an opening, whatever day it might be, <laughs> that you've got a gap. Yeah, I find from my experience, all these sorts of things tend to happen right at the beginning of your launch. You'll have a couple of people that will just try to be a bit sneaky. And so long as your, your team are staff, uh, your, your team are trained really well and you're, um, I guess, um, confident in, in what you're doing, um, then you know, you can just nip it in the bud. And the, right? if you're not feeling confident, remember that we're confident. <laughs> we've yeah. got we've got every single answer for you here at Salon Pay. And um, there is those quite a few ways to contact us. So you've got the support tab within your portal, which sends us an instant direct message. Um, and we, we will get back to you. And we also have the phone number and we um, lastly have our email address. If, you, if you're not logged into the portal, you can just email us the old fashioned way. 
Yeah. Um, so definitely there's lots of ways to contact us and all of our team are really trained. So we, we're able to help you with that. Yeah. And I also find that often um, this is, I think, the most simple concept. Think of it exactly like a gym membership. Your clients keep a package and in a gym it would be just a standard package where they can come in and train or it might include personal training. It's exactly the same but it's also very easily overcomplicated. Um, and often we think of questions and we have concerns about things that have never happened in the, the whole experience of running memberships for about four years in Australia and New Zealand. Um, or it could be a really common concern um, that, that does happen on occasion that we can help you with. But often, you know, we think of all these different scenarios that might happen and they never happen. So your best to you know, I always think that to keep it not complicated, just to get started, um, choose your packages, get them out there into the real world. And then as you have questions come up, it's a case of saying to your client, that's a great question. Let me find out the answer for you. And then we're, we're there to help you through answering that question, if that makes sense as well. Um, I'm going to see if we have any more questions and then we might wrap it up because we're about 50 minutes. Um, uh, cost per transaction. So depending on, I'll let Sally answer that question. Yeah, sure. Variance. Yeah, so transaction costs obviously depend on what country you're from. So I can't actually see that with the questions that are coming through. But we have different transaction fees for different countries. Um, and obviously the buy now, pay later is also powered by uh, Afterpay is a different transaction fee. But for our memberships, um, usually if you're in Australia, it's um, 2.5% plus 30 cents. And if um, you're international, then you can contact us directly because it obviously depends which country you're in. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely touch on that individually if that's okay. But in Australia, it's 2.5% plus 30 cents. Sure. And Lani has asked if a client could pay upfront the first payment and get a jump start on gaining access to their memberships. They definitely can. So if they call up and they've just joined a membership, um, you can definitely say, look, you can come in for that first appointment right now. We'll, we'll take the cost of that, that service. And then like you would any other time, you'd, you'd keep them paying weekly. Um, Kristen? Yeah, Kristen's got a great question actually. Yeah. So she's wanting to know, um, so do you need to do weekly payments or can you do monthly payments for the membership and which is better? Look, I, I, we're always a bit, both of us tend to be a little bit outspoken. I always think that weekly is better. It is the, on that landing page, it's the client's choice. So the client chooses fortnightly, uh, sorry, weekly, fortnightly or monthly. I personally think um, obviously aligning with their pay, but also weekly is going to be the lowest cost to them. Um, I. I would say on our memberships, just so you know, the clients on memberships, it would be like 90 to 95% are on fortnightly or weekly. Um, monthly, we've even discussed monthly not, not necessarily needing to be an option moving forward, but there is that odd person who gets paid monthly and wants that, that amount to come out on a monthly basis. I think that default rate is a lot lower with a weekly payment Most as well. definitely. So, yep. you know, if somebody's missing a $25 payment versus a hundred and something dollar um, payment, it's, it's a lot easier to nick that in the bud and recover a $25 payment and keep it going than it is, you know, when, it, when it's getting up there at kind of sort of, you know, the hundred plus or the four yeah. weeks worth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it becomes similar to just paying for it as it is. Um, but yeah, so weekly would definitely be, yeah what we're suggesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. Um, if you have any more questions, please um, email us support at salonpay.com.au. If you're, you are a Salon Pay member in your portal, there's a brand new support, su support, support tab, which is um, where you can message us instantly um, and that, that we can answer those questions for you. Of course, you can phone us as well, 1300 2975. Six eight. Six eight. Um, <laughs> so um, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy Mondays to join us. And um, we look forward to seeing you guys um, killing it with your memberships. If you need any help, just yell out. That's what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. Share your wins with us. We love that too. <laughs> no problems at all. Okay. Bye. Bye.